Hey everybody, it's Sophia and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies, <clears throat> and today we're doing another full moon <clears throat> movie review oh. of Shrunken Heads. What's it called? Shrunken Heads. What's it called? This is a 1994 movie. It is the last movie that Safi picked out for the full moon week. Uh, for some reason, when I did the random winner picker, it just basically plowed through all of Safi's choices. Uh, and it just seemed like it's been mostly her choices for some reason. I know. And this movie, it's one of those movies where, you know, we were going to get to it eventually. But it's not one of the ones we were rushing to watch. And it just looked, it looked kind of weird. You know, you have the poster. It's just the three shrunken heads on there. And, you know, it is a weird movie. It's definitely on brand for Full Moon. But there's familiar things about it that, I don't know, like, it, I, I got some West Side Story vibes. Well, and there's some cliche with, like, Basic to spoil this movie, this is kind of like a story that's been told a lot of times before, and that is like the story where you have these innocent characters or a innocent character, they get killed by a bully, and they come back supernaturally, and then they kill the bully. Like it's a story that's been told time and time and again. Toxic Avenger, for example. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really not a very original story, but it is a lot of fun. It, and for me, compared to all the movies, all of the full moon movies we've seen for this year, it's the best one. Yeah. Because I really enjoyed it. It had, In fact, it, I might like the even rewatch at least the end part of it. It had a unique score because this was made by the brother of Danny Elfman and the music was very much like Danny Elfman type of music. Yeah. It was a lot like Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. A lot like uh what was I going to say? I can't remember. Any of his movies? Uh, no, I was I was going to say something specific. But it just, it's real, it was really pretty good music. And, yeah, I mean, I guess we should go through the movie. I mean, it to me, it's like, this was a very much like an extended TV episode. Like, I really felt like this could have just been like a 30-minute TV episode. Uh, it is fun, though. As I said before, I feel like this movie... Is, is kind of like a weird little hidden gem that you can find. And it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's like in the middle type of thing. Oh, no, it actually, it reminded me of this anthology movie that I watched earlier in the year. And yeah. they, would, they would play this music in between each story. And it was very much <laughs> like this music. And... Sophie? Well, there were two big unusual things about it. I think it, it had kids in it. They weren't little kids like uh, the one little kid in that uh, the Moonbeam movie. These were um, probably like freshmen or sophomores in high school or maybe just freshmen or even eighth graders. And it was a neighborhood in the city and there were bullies, and there were good guys, and it's just like like Mark was said. And uh, there's bullies, and you know, it's it's kind of. But, but there's also what was really strange. Uh, there's a uh, one of the good guys. His dad's a grocery person, and he works for him in the store. You know, sweeps and does errands or whatever just does what he wants him to do and then there's a, a pretty girl who is with a, the bad one of the bad bullies and the bullies actually they go they all go to school together and so they see each other at school 
And then afterwards... Uh, it's also one of those situations where it's like, why is she with that guy? Yeah. You know, it's just really jarring. And, you know, it's a consistent thing we see in these movies. And he's very... The bully, the head bully is very... He's very rough. In other words, but at first... Uh, but then he improves himself. He and but anyway, no, he there's, there's, well, he tries. He makes this pretend improvement. It's a facade, actually. Yeah. But there's two um, two things in it that's really notable that I found. Uh, I don't know the word jarring or sh- shocking. Weird. Weird. First and of all, that's been like a reoccurring theme of the movies we've reviewed on this channel lately. Is they're weird, they make weird choices, and the this the, is like bizarre. Yeah, the weirdest nobody choice. Does, nobody did this. Maybe they do it now, but I don't know. The weirdest Even choice now. is Meg Foster. She is playing the head villain. She is the head of this gang. And She's I portraying a boy. I guess so. it's a it's a it's a manly woman or it's a womanly man or I don't know what she is, but like she she's dressed like a boy, she kinda acts like a boy, she has like a men's haircut. It is really, no, really creepy. To, I thought she was supposed to be a man. It's really, really weird. It's it's very uh ugh. I mean it's like the most opposite role for her yeah. to have ever played. She she's said, been around for a long time. She said this was one of her favorite roles. That's because it's so and antithetical to it, anything she's there and it's in evil character too. It's so creepy though. It's like, ooh. Yeah, I can't figure I just can't figure out what the decision was to cast her as a male. I don't know. And that that's I find that really weird and I, I would love to know the answer. You know, like somebody from who made the the person who made the movie, why they decided to do that. Because I think that this was a very unusual thing. Uh years ago and yet you know in saturday night live they've had lots of skits where they've had uh in the last i don't know eight years ten years they've had a few female comedians uh you know be male characters and that was and they did a really good job but this is like way way before that and um but this this isn't just like a saturday night live impression where they're doing a really over the top no. impersonation this is like she is legitimately trying to be a, a man and it's one of those things where you're like ooh, this is really unsettling and i didn't even it, know it was her and at the beginning i saw the name meg foster I said well where is she in the movie and i i immediately knew who she was because of her distinct voice and kind of her eyes she, she was very you can tell eyes so i didn't have as much of a problem with Safi. well i you was know, really Safi, shocked Safi's just not used to seeing women that want to look like men well, even though but that's what a lot of women do, do nowadays but she doesn't do that she's all never over the place done that. i don't remember her in any I mean, she's been around for a long time. But you I've, see, you see that a lot nowadays. These well, women, women who want to be men and men who want to be women, you see it all the time. And uh, this movie, you know, it just shows the uh, creepy nature of the whole thing. It's like this character stands out like a sore thumb. And she's not in and, it right away. They they sneak up to it. They like sneak her in, and. Um, that's why, and it's just so funny, and I didn't figure it out until the end. And but anyway, okay. The, another shocking thing was that it was extremely violent. They what? Don't, they don't show anything, but the fact that someone would order a hit on three kids in the middle of daylight, like it's the Saturday or the Valentine's Day massacre or something. Where they come up and they shoot. And I wondered, I thought, is this really going to happen? Are these people really going to kill those kids? And they murder them. 
and they don't show anything. And that's you know what, what I mean? What that reminded it's just the me fact of that they would do it. Yeah, it was very shocking and very like. But I mean, you you did expect it. I mean, the kids, you know, they have to become shrunken heads somehow. Well, I didn't know they were uh, the shrunken heads. I did from the poster. Well, yeah, you. But I didn't. I didn't think about that. I just thought we did talk about the poster. I thought those shrunken heads are weird looking. Yeah. They're usually brown. They look like raisins. It, it is an <laughs> R-rated movie. It should be because but, the uh, thought of that. That that reminded me of RoboCop, which is you know that's uh, what happens in RoboCop. You know the, the main guy, he gets shot like a million times. It's like a brutal disgusting gory death and then he becomes robocop and then they get their due and see that's another movie that has like the same exact plot and and, and like when did robocop come out i don't know because if this came Make out sure you get the first one 1987 so you know this movie it probably took influence from robocop because that was like a similar story except RoboCop was a lot better. I mean, RoboCop is a classic movie. And another shocking thing is, uh, well, the fact that they have a good guy, uh, and and they they have a good guy. They have a good guy, (laughs) an older man who sells magazines and newspapers, you know, the, the, I can't think what the stand is called. You know, they commonly have this in the, you know, they, sh- they would show this in New York City, you know, on the street. Do they have that in Philly? I don't know, but, um, because we've been to Philly. But, and he would, uh, he was from Haiti. And he'd been here a million years, a long time. He he was older, he limped. And he either, they said he was either a magician or a, from the police, like the secret police, And when he lived in Haiti. So you're thinking, well, it's called shrunken heads. You know that uh, he has to be some kind of... Um, voodoo person because that's that that's a that's a, actually they have a religion in haiti and voodoo uh is i can't this is a sangria it's not sangria but i i can't think of the what the word is but um i think the voodoo is part of it and you've seen all kinds if you've seen anything about voodoo you you've heard about this with about shrunken heads and they uh, give you a medication, and you you're, you become physically dead, but then you come back alive after so many hours, and you're like walking like a zombie. I mean, this is all this kind of thing. But anyway, so he likes the boys. The boys are always respectful. They buy comic books from him. There's a new boy too. There's two boys who are, have been in the neighborhood since they were born, but then there's a new boy too. This is just another movie, too, that reminds you of why you wouldn't want to live in New York, by the way. This is just, why? I mean, it's just the whole movie, it's like, oh, that's ew. Silly. It's like, I would not want to live there. Uh, it looks sweaty, it looks gross, it looks, dec- it just, it looks terrible. It looks like a dump. And, you know, it doesn't even look, it looks almost as bad as Gotham City. And, well, that's, uh, that's another thing. I was thinking about Gotham City. Yeah. And so these kids, uh, one of them, he's like, there's this one plot, It was, I, to me it was like a red herring, where the fat one, he, he loved uh, candy, he loved jelly beans. Yeah. And, and the guy gave him these, like, they, were, they looked like black jelly beans, and he said they were some kind of uh, fruit candy from uh, Haiti. And I felt like that was kind of like something that I thought was going to go somewhere. But I think it did have, it, it did do something. I, I don't know, because remember, but when, when, when he, he br- had it in his hand. When he brought them to life, he had to give candy to the fat one. To make it, because he as a shrunken w- head. Up. And I thought that that was kind of queer. But, like, I just, I, I expected something bigger to happen. I don't know, but, like, they just seemed like they were hinting at something. Like, like something bigger might have happened from that. You know, like, 
I don't know, like, maybe the candy gives him powers or something. Like, I don't know. Like, but, you know, like, that's the impression that I got. And then they didn't do anything. And I was like, eh, whatever. I, I don't know. That's, it, it, they didn't really, that wasn't very well, that part wasn't very well done. If they wanted, what? if they were implying something, they didn't explain it well. No, they, were, they weren't implying anything. But I, I thought, thought they were. I assumed uh, that maybe the candy would come into play later in the movie somehow. Like, maybe they would give uh, poison candy to the bad guys or something. I don't know. Like, But yeah, there's that's also... Too, that's too innocent. My God. There's also <laughs> a forbidden romance between the girl... <laughs> I can't even remember her name. I can't either. She was just a young girl. She was the... Kathy? I don't know. She was the kid's age. And... Um, She's like the nice girl who's with the bully, but one of the good boys likes her and uh, is very, always very respectful to her. But the, uh, the thing is, the other really bizarre, violent thing is that we know this guy is a voodoo person because what happens is they, he hints at it right away. They, the bullies are... They did something, and they're driving really fast uh, away, and the voodoo guy, you know, he's on the street selling, so, I mean, he's at his stand. He, he gets a bottle of powder, and he opens it up, and he blows it towards the, their speeding car. They almost ran somebody over. Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. And that caused them to magically go out of control. They're like, they can't control the car, and they crane off into a curb. So you know that's like he does have some kind of magic powers or the ability to use objects to I, achieve what he I, wants. I think that the weirdest thing about this movie is that it feels like a kid's movie. Yeah, it does. But it's not it, with that violent stuff. That's what's no weird about it is that it feels like this story could have been tackled a little bit more maturely. <laughs> like it could have been like a real movie type of thing if it was written a little bit better but as it is it's just kind of like it's a decent kids movie it's a it's a decent like it's it's one of those movies where like you know it would have been a part of that month in 2018 where we were talking about like are these movies trying to be for kids or for adults like I don't understand like because I don't think that like I don't think a lot of people really saw this movie like because it's it's a kids movie it's about a a couple of kids, they get killed, they Three come back to shrunken heads, and but, they kill the bullies, and that's it. But like, the thing is... It's the, a sad story. But the voodoo guy, this is what's another shocking thing. He goes into the mortuary, and he goes to each of their coffins, and he, they don't show anything. Well, this, the, 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 and he chops off their heads. How How is he take, supposed to make them into shrunken well, heads if he doesn't that. do that? But I mean, my God. Well, a, a what'd huge, you expect? A huge butcher knife. What'd you expect? Well, I know that, but I mean, it was... That's what I say. This is not... Um, it, but they don't show anything. That's the thing. It was even weirder when there's like a dead cat outside, and then he takes it inside and... Puts it in a pot of boiling water with the the uh, heads, and well, he's like, he "Here's some seasoning for <laughs> you." Like that was weird, and like I I liked stuff like that. Like it was very weird, but very fun and it, it kooky. That's the word that you could use to describe this movie. It's a it's a kooky movie. Yeah, that's right. A good, that's a good, a really good description. Even the music is kooky, and they come back. And they have all these sequences where they're flying around, and it's really funny looking. Well, he teaches it, them. They don't know they they don't know they have power. It reminds you of Batman, the way they're flying around everywhere, right, Safi? I don't know about that. Flying around at night, you have these criminals in alleyways. They attack the criminals like it was like Batman. The weird thing, yeah, that, that's true, was that there's a a one year time jump. And it's like, what were these shrunken heads doing the whole time? They're just training in that guy's apartment, yeah. like. Yeah, that's what that's what they imply. <laughs> no. I think it it what's sad about the movie is that the shrunken heads kind of lose their humanity 
they lose their character because... But he said that. He said they were going to do that. Yeah, but it's just unfortunate. It's like kind of like a thing where, like, I don't know, like... I don't know, like, because they feel like th- these should have been better characters, these kids. They were the main characters of the movie, and they stopped their entire character development because they're, you know, they're just shrunken heads now. And the only character development is that the the guy who's in love with the girl, they get together, and he lets her hug her, her breasts, and uh, that's the that's his character development. Yeah. But, like, there's no mention of the parents or anything. Like, the parents... No, they do show the dad once in the store, and the, the bullies go into the store and buy some beer or something. He just lets them go ahead and buy it. And no, but do the shrunken heads interact with their parents? No. 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 no they didn't show that at all. See? Like, they, that they was weird. They don't know anything about it. They don't know anything. So that's what I mean was how, like, this movie could have been handled a bit more maturely... And it was so weird how it was handled like it was a kid's movie type of thing. Uh, Although I don't, those violent imagery or... You, you said you don't see anything. Well, implied violence is not... It's, it's not just like, like that arcade movie from last year where you were like, Oh my God, Marco, that's the worst movie I've ever seen. And then you don't see anything in that movie. Right? Well, they have a suicide. The suicide? <clears throat> I've had too many experiences with the suicide thing, and I just... Like Arcade. Which is terrible. Arcade was a really good movie. Yeah, that was a good movie. It was a really I good movie. I saw that years ago. This years was just... A, years ago. This was just an okay... Okay... <coughs> movie. It yeah. was the type of movie that Safi would pick out, you know? It's like something that... You know, she even kind of looks like she could be a shrunken oh, head. Oh, Marco, cut it out! Right, Safi? We should stop saying stupid stuff like Why that. Why don't you be a shrunken head for Halloween? All you'd have to do no, is, is wear a black costume, and then you could put, like, a wig on your head, and that would be, like, the costume, because it would be, like, the heads floating in no in the air. So, like, wouldn't be that hard. Why don't you do that, Marco? What's going to be your costume for Halloween? I don't know! I have to figure it out. Now that they've canceled Chucky, I saw a a woman, a mother, at the grocery store with her kid, and she had a huge Chucky shirt on. I've never seen it before. It looked like it was brand new, and I told her I liked it, and I said, you do know they canceled the show. God, Softy! she said, what? I said, oh, yeah. I said, my son and I do a movie and uh, TV reviews. What the hell? we, we, We hear stuff. We hear stuff about that. We hear stuff about that. We pay that. attention, and he found out yesterday that it, the TV show had been canceled. So she had not seen the latest season with them going to Washington. Well, all I can think is now we'll never know what happens to Jake and Devin and their <laughs> gay relationship. That was so important to the Chucky universe. Yeah, I know. I don't know why it, they had to do that. You, that. Like, that's all they focused on that show. So I'm really glad it got canceled. Wow, that was some kind of silly. The only thing that I'm sad about is that, as I've said before, and this is like a tangent, but I'm sick and tired of how TV shows are nowadays to where they come on and then they get canceled or they end prematurely. And it's like you can't look forward to anything anymore on television. Like, I really prefer the days where, like, it would be like, okay, it's getting time for that show to come on this year. And they don't have that anymore. And it's like, that's what TV is supposed to be. So, right, Safi? At least it was. Yeah, and that's what was fun about it. It was like, oh, great, It's, it's the fall. It's time for Bates Motel to come on. It's Bates Motel time. And it's like, now it's like, you, you don't have that anymore. They come out all in one day, usually. Or they come out and it's like, you just forget about them. Because then the next season is like five years later. And then they cancel it. It's pretty bad. But Safi, this movie... You like this movie. You well, really, liked really it liked it. You, you it loved was... the part where he hugged her boobs. I thought that was weird, too. And it sounded like the... the... 
old man, the, the diviner, or whatever you want to call him, uh, the witch doctor, I don't know what he was. Anyway, he thought it was weird, too. Really? Yeah. He said, maybe I better leave the room. Why don't you speak up a little bit, Sophie? Anyway, Marco, uh, so all yeah. the bad guys get killed. Yeah. Or they get messed up. Very simple prison. story. And, Very simple. But they, they, the things that they show, like all the... Well, many of the bad guys just turn into zombies themselves, and one of them opens his mouth that's full of maggots and, you know, real gross things. And actually, some of the uh, bullies become... They become surrogates to the witch doctor and, like, yeah. do what he says. Yeah, I, so I, I thought that part was kind of cool. I mean, I like the movie. I'm not. I'm not trying to criticize the movie. It's just that it's overly simplistic, and it's it's not a movie I'd watch again anytime soon. Yeah, I might. I might. I would like to watch the end of it again. Um, I mean, I just feel like the movies we picked this year for Full Moon Week have been mostly a miss. Yes, I know. This movie, I feel like. Safi is is overhyping it a little bit because the other movies are so bad. Well, if the other movies, the other ones, it, it sells so much better. Well, I disagree. I thought that Beyond the Seventh Door was highly oh, entertaining. Oh well, yeah, that one's good too. I would like to watch that again because it was fun and funny. This movie was also fun, funny, but, eh. So, I mean, it's it, it's okay. It, I would still recommend the movie. If you're if you're really in the mood to watch it, like, it's not something where you have to rush to see it or anything, you know. I mean, well, <laughs> it's not in theater, so you know, it's just on Tubi. And you can watch, and yeah, we watched it on Tubi. It's also on YouTube. Free. Oh, okay. And also, I thought it was funny because the kid with the curly hair, you know, the fat kid. I thought at first, like, is that the kid from the Sandlot? Because for some oh. reason. He wasn't, but for oh, some reason, he like, look like him a little bit. yeah, because for some reason, whenever you see like a fat kid with curly hair, you always think of the kid from the sand lot. So yeah. it's like, even if that movie came out nowadays, that you'd be like, is that the kid from the sand lot? <laughs> is he in this movie too? Hmm. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's that's the they're in a stasis now. If yeah. they're not, if and and he wants them that way because they have to rest up or something, yeah. or re quote recharge in a spiritual way, and um, that's it. So uh, it's more of a tragedy than anything. It, well, it is. There's a. I mean, these three kids were murdered. Yeah. In cold blood on the street in front of everybody. And that is just kind of skipped over. I mean, it's just kind of like, oh, that happened. Let's move on. It's and, and that This is it, New York. This never, is how things go in New York. It'd never be like that anywhere. I mean, they. it was like the Valentine's Day Massacre. Hey, I'm it's walking like, here. Yeah, hey, I'm killing kids here. Yeah, I just... Ugh. And what's so funny, the main uh, bully, he starts working for this bad guy, and he goes to school, and he, he gets paid a salary... He starts wearing nicer clothing, and so that that's when this girl she decides. Well, she is she had liked the other guy, but she's like, oh, and he's dead now, and so she's so she been with him that whole year. That's why Marco said, "What were they doing? The, what were the shrunken heads doing the whole year?" Yeah, I know. And all, uh, because she's <laughs> the one who mentioned like he killed because she found out from the voodoo guy. That they killed her, her quote boyfriend killed those boys, and uh, she didn't even know that or believe it, and so, um, and she says, "I've been. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I've been going out with them for a year." Yeah. So that's when you find out that she, it's been she a is whole really, year. She is kind of a questionable character, you know. She yeah. she participates in what people like to call musical chair dating, you know, and that's what she did in this movie. And it was kind of like, oh, like she's the love interest. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I guess because it's, it's New York and there's no one better around. You know, it's, that's how it is in New York. Marco, don't, don't 
don't start doing New that. New York is awful. No, it's not. New York is a cesspool. No, it's not. It's horrible. He's just saying those things. You watch things. the movie Taxi Driver, you know exactly what Michael, New York is all God, about. Those are movies. People hate New York. No, they don't. New York is gross. It's That's awful. Not true. It's full of nasty, nasty people. Oh, my God. It's a nasty, nasty place. Marco, shut and up. this movie is Marco's just. just saying that. Don't believe this, it. This movie, says. you could retitle this movie just another day in New York. And, and people would believe that. They'd be like, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's how it, it is. If they believe it, they're stupid. Why? Okay? It's true. No, it's not. Like Florida is worse because Florida, well, Florida is, is like a third world country. Florida is insane, but like New York is pretty bad too. You know, like New they York. All have New their... York is Gotham, and Florida is hell. <laughs> and California is the devil. I don't know. Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes! And Texas. Cut it out. Texas is uh the desert and. Uh, Marco, why are you insulting people? You haven't realized. What do you some, mean? Some people from these places could be in your subscribers. Why would you do that? I bet they know what's going on where they oh, live. Oh, please cut it well, out. Well, uh, I live uh, in a really uh, crappy town in Ohio. Well, I'm going. Well, yeah, we, uh, I guess we live I'm, 25 miles west of Springfield. I'm fully aware of how bad. Uh, live in Ohio Bill. is no. It has nothing to do with that. It has well, to yeah, do with it does. Made Ohio it is, is terrible, awful, awful place, awful, awful uh, state, terrible state. Okay, I don't want us to talk anymore about people's states. Even Why? It's our own. We have we have our own problems, and so does everybody else. But that doesn't make them evil. R- Rhode Island is okay. Oh, Marco. Get off of it. R- Rhode Island is pretty cool. Marco's never been there, and neither have I. But we do know somebody who lives there. Pennsylvania's pretty the cool. senator from Rhode Island is really good, too. Pens- senator Pen- Whitehouse. Pen- Pennsylvania's pretty cool. Pennsylvania's really good. A lot of good, neat places to go in Pennsylvania. That's What's your good. food review? My food review is... A piece of New York pizza? No. My... My food review is, it's like, you you usually get, let's see, you usually get like a certain kind of chili or spaghetti sauce, and somebody adds something really spicy to it that you don't normally eat, and it makes it a little bit hard to eat, but then you eat it, and it's it's okay, but it's still, it's still something that you wouldn't normally have, and and that's what I attribute these killings of these children in the middle of the street in front of, like, they're being gunned down by the mob. I mean, it's just weird. And then they get made, they get their heads chopped and I, off. And I'm tired of all these movies with these, like, assassinations and things. Like, you know, that new Francis Ford Coppola movie. It had two assassinations in it, and this movie had an assassination. Like I'm sick and tired. It feels like filmmakers put assassinations in movies to to be edgy, and to be like hardcore. I don't know what they do. I don't. Like, I don't. I'm, I thought it was bizarre. I just. I there's no word to describe it. Really. Well, it's just the fact that anybody first. The guy, and it was Meg Foster, orders the, guy. the <laughs> bullies to gun down those kids. And they were not comfortable with it at first. They go, well, we go to school with them. They're just other kids. And what happened was they were, um, what did they take? They kept calling him their, his receipts. I guess they're, they're gambling and maybe the when he what well, this guy controls the neighborhood so he gets um <laughs> he gets money from Meg each foster vendor. controls the neighborhood he gets money from each vendor just like the mafia to get protection from his little group of bullies and protection from what i don't know because the only bad people are those people so but so he has bags and bags of these quote receipts and the boys take them and that's what persist, precipitates their being murdered in the middle of the street. So, anyway, 
Uh, so that my review is just you get this uh, all of a sudden you get this spice you didn't ask for it you didn't you don't really want it, it but it isn't too, so spicy that you can't eat it but it still affects it um, but you wouldn't want to eat it again it might even make you sick your stomach which I have trouble with sometimes <clears throat> so that's my review my food review what's your food review uh, I would give this movie, in in uh school in middle school they in elementary school, they would have these pre, frozen uh cheeseburgers and hamburgers, and, and they would heat them up and they would be like lukewarm, oh, and they'd be wrapped up in these little aluminum foil things and uh, they wouldn't give you any French fries. You'd just get the hamburger. You could get uh, some kind of a side, and then you get the dessert and the milk, and that's what they considered a lunch, you know, that's, uh, thanks to a certain president's wife. No, that's and, not uh, true. Because so these cheeseburgers, really... they, these burgers were just really mediocre, but they were pretty good. I mean, they were, they were bad, but they were good because they were not bad like some of the other food that the school had. So it would be fun sometimes to get those crappy cheeseburgers and then uh, you'd have the chocolate milk and then a maybe a little Debbie uh, dessert and you'd feel like, yeah, I just ate my lunch at school. Just ate my well, nutritious what, lunch. What would happen is Marco would kind of bring a snack yeah. and then after school I'd just I'd take him to go eat. And yeah. We, and that was actually... Uh, some people did that. Not he wasn't the only one. Yeah. And there was a big thing. I don't know what it's like now. I haven't heard ever heard anything since then. But but when Marco was in school, there was a big thing. There's that, a lot of people that go to Taco Bell they after getting, school. They weren't getting enough lunch. And you know they have sports. They have all kinds of things going on after school, and they'd be starving. They wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough to eat. There would be uh, teachers who would have food so that they could give it to them after lunch because they knew that people were starving. And these were like middle and high schoolers. And yeah. This isn't even the elementary school kids. And you have these, you know, it's a big school. You have these different times, too. I think, weren't you like them the earliest lunch time, too? So, I mean, these are people who ate even earlier. And so... By the time they got out of school, it would be like almost four o'clock. By the time I mean, you got home. Like if you rode the bus, you got you got home like a, didn't you after four, like almost four thirty. Or you were an early the early person, but anyway, still people do get home that late, and they're starving, and so uh, anyway, I remember those days. Oh, I don't, you don't hear about that now, so maybe it, it must have changed. So that's it. So uh, I would, if I were you, uh, people who are listening, um, you might still want to check out this movie. I mean, I'm not, I'm not telling you this is an Academy Award movie or that it's the best thing on the planet, but compared to almost all of the full moon movies we've seen, it's better than them. And not the first one that we saw with the doors, but um, that one and this one is out of all of them. Well, pick a number the between one and two, Safi. Two. Okay, our next movie is Blood Dolls. Hmm, okay. So is that Safi? another puppet type movie? Yeah. Okay, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers. Marco says we have 610 yeah. subscribers now. So thank you, everybody, and have a good day, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.